Hey everybody, welcome to Reading the Bible to Cats. Henry, <laughs> Henry's kind of camouflaged by the furry pillow. Um, Guster is also clamoring for attention. Guster, why don't you listen to the Bible? Anyway, he'll settle down. I just got in and I think he's wanting a hug, but he'll He'll be okay. He'll give me a hug in a little bit. Let's see if I can show you a picture. Guest, are you okay? Yeah. Okay. Well, we're on Hebrews chapter 6, and I'll just read from the Archaeological Study Bible. Let us pounce on it. <laughs> Guster just pounced on the Bible when I said that. Let's see if I can show you. There he is. He's going to eat the Bible. Guster, are you going to pounce on the word or are you going to eat the word? Are you trying to read the word? Well, okay, we'll go back to Henry. And I'm just going to read. Okay. Therefore, let us leave the elementary teachings about Christ and go on to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God, instruction about baptisms, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And God permitting, we will do so. It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the Word of God and the powers of the coming age, if they fall away, to be brought back to repentance because to their loss they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting him to public disgrace. Land that drinks in the rain, often falling on it, and that produces a crop useful to those for whom it is farmed, receives the blessing of God. But land that produces thorns and thistles is worthless and is in danger of being cursed. In the end, it will be burned. Even though we speak like this, dear friends, we are confident of better things in your case, things that accompany salvation. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. We want each of you to show the same diligence to the very end in order to make your hope sure. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience Inherit what has been promised. When God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. And so, after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. Men swear by someone greater than themselves, and the oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all argument. Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what was promised, he confirmed it with an oath. God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope offered to us may be greatly encouraged. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where Jesus, who went before us, has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever 
in the order of Melchizedek. Hey everyone, that's the end of Hebrew 6. And I just feel like there's a lot of heavy theology in this short chapter. And um, it's very dense, like like thick with theology. <laughs> and I mean, it's funny, I've been a believer a long time, <laughs> very long time. Um, but still, it's like, I feel like I have to, it's, it's still a little difficult to unpack everything in here. Um, but, you know, it starts out with, like, you know, therefore let us leave the elementary teachings about Christ and go on to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from, you know, and then it's like, like there's whoever the author of this book is is saying you know that we need to mature and not keep rehashing um the elementary teachings about christ um and then there's you know uh, uh, some passages about um you know, v verses four through um, verses four through eight. It's that's kind of tricky. That that whole section. I'm looking to see if there's anything in the study notes about it. Or if they sidestep that, <laughs> I don't see anything. I feel like they weren't talking about that. Um, hmm. Well, I don't know. What the, you know, verses four, it is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God, and the powers of the coming age if they fall away to be brought back to repentance because to their loss they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting him to public disgrace. Land that drinks in the rain often falling on it and that produces a crop useful to those for whom it is farmed receives the blessing of God, but land that produces thorns and thistles is worthless and is in danger of being cursed. In the end it will be burned. I, I don't know. It, it's, it seems to be talking about fruitfulness, like, um, you know, just bearing fruit, you know, the fruit of the Spirit. Um, but I guess if, if the fruit that is being produced is nothing more than thorns and thistles, that's not evidence of like the spirit in you in in the in us you know or but i know in the past when i've read that section it's made me kind of nervous because it's like um it just you know because i have always believed that you know when you have the holy spirit you have the holy spirit you know when you're born again you're born again you can't become unborn again when you're saved, you're saved, you're, you know, nothing can pluck you out of God's hand. Um, so I'm not sure I totally understand verses 4 through 8, but it seems like it's talking about, you know, true repentance, true fruitfulness, truly being a follower of, 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 you know, I guess, you know, like elsewhere in the scripture says that, you know, there are people who claim to be of God or whatever. And it's like everything they do and say and, 
I don't know, just the, the fruit of their lives is like the opposite, you know, not to, you know, judge people, but I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud. I don't know. That's just where this little passage takes me, but we'll try and look something up about that. Um, but then, you know, in verses nine and on, he's like, even though we speak like this, dear friends, we are confident of better things in your case, things that accompany salvation. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. Um, and then he talks about making your hope sure and that, um, you know, inheriting what has been promised. And then he speaks of Abraham and the promise God made to Abraham. And um, and then in the end, um, speaks of Jesus as, as being that high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek, which we learn in Mel- Melchizedek in the Hebrew scriptures. You know, he encountered Abraham, Melchizedek, and he's another mysterious character, Melchizedek. But um, let me see what it says to do, do about Melchizedek. And... Well, actually, about verse 19, the inner sanctuary behind the curtain, this is a study note, refers to the most holy place, the place of God's presence. Under the old covenant, only the high priest could step behind the curtain in the tabernacle, later temple, separating the outer area of the holy place from the inner, and then only once a year on the Day of Atonement, this barrier was torn away in the New Covenant. Yeah. Um, then there's, the sec- there's a study note commentary on oaths and Jewish and Christian practice. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't know if I want to read that. Let me look at the other Bible. And I have a glass of water here, and I think Guster is coveting it. Guster, are you coveting my water? Sorry, let me get the other Bible and see if there's anything interesting. Uh, there. About Hebrews. Chapter 6, turning the pages, flipping pages, flipping, turning, turning, to everything, there's a season, turn, 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 um, sorry, it's taking me a while to get to Hebrews for some reason. Uh, I'm almost there. <laughs> uh, oh, okay, almost there. Okay, here I am. Hebrews chapter six. Let's see if there's anything here. Well, earlier in chapter five, there's a note because Melchizedek is mentioned there, and this study note says about that. Um, chapter five, verse ten. In the order of Melchizedek, this is a quotation from Psalm 110, verse 4, which references the mysterious encounter between Abraham and an enigmatic priest of God named Melchizedek. See note on Genesis 14, verses 18 through 20. Melchizedek sparked a wealth of ancient speculation and interpretation. The author of Hebrews appears to see Melchizedek as a prefiguration of Christ. See Hebrews 7, 1. Well, we'll read Hebrews 7, 1 next. Um, yeah. Yeah, and we do see that in the Hebrew Scriptures, these prefigurations of, of Christ, like the angel of the Lord. Um. Okay, I'm looking for other study notes here. 
Well, there isn't a whole lot now. I like that reference, Anchor of the Soul. Yeah. Oh, here, there's his on Hebrews 6, verses 4 through 6. Impossible to be brought back to repentance. Members of the Dead Sea Scrolls community could be similarly expelled for committing blasphemy or speaking against the leadership. Okay, this Bible comments, comments on the dead members of the Dead Sea Scrolls community, but doesn't really address the passage. Um, let me look at, where'd my phone go? Oh no. You know what? I don't know if I can do it deep dive into that passage because Oop, dropped my Bible. Sorry. Yeah, I don't have my phone handy. Oh well. And look, I'll show you what happened. That it startled Henry. We dropped the word of God. Oh, sorry everyone. Okay. Well, anyway, I guess we'll just launch into a prayer. And it today is Wednesday. I always like Thursdays, Thursday mornings. So I'm looking forward to Thursday morning. That was a random thought. <laughs> Guster's listening. Guster, are you listening? Would you would you like me to focus on you since you're such a good le listener? Here, let me turn to you. Gussie? Guster? Okay. Well, I guess we can say a prayer. I feel like my study tonight was a little disjointed. Um, but I think the word stands for itself. Say a prayer, and we'll remember... Florida because that Hurricane Milton is headed that way. It's Wednesday. Um, so I'll pray. Lord, uh, thank you for your word. And even though I feel very inept <laughs> when handling it uh, with certain passages, um, we ask for your, your enlightenment and especially that uh, particular passage that I mentioned. I don't quite understand it and need a little bit of um, wisdom from your spirit. Thank you that Jesus is a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek and that he... He he serves on our behalf. He has this this role that is maybe a little mysterious to me, but yet deeply profound. And um, thank you for Messiah, Lord. And I admit, sometimes when I pray to you, Lord, I don't know who I'm addressing, if I'm addressing the Father or Jesus. I get confused. Oh, anyway, Lord, I just will say, Lord, um, Lord, we thank you for life and eternal life. Thank you for um, everyone who watches or listens. I pray that you bless them, Lord, and keep them safe if they're in the path of the storm, this hurricane, Milton. I pray, Lord, for the peace of Israel and for the peace of Jerusalem. I pray for protection for your land and your people. I pray for the hostages, Lord, that they would miraculously feel your presence in those tunnels or wherever they are if they are still with us, that they would feel your love and your peace and, and experience who you are in, in all your wonder, 
even in those dark places, Lord. I pray, Lord, for the Christians in Lebanon and the innocent civilians and animals that you would guide them out of harm's way and protect them. I pray for people in all these war-torn areas that you would have mercy and compassion as you do, Lord. You are near to the brokenhearted. I pray for my country that there would be peace and you know especially as we near the election that it wouldn't get crazy but that your grace would prevail and you would have mercy on us lord and i pray for everyone who's who has a prayer request in this in this community it has mentioned you know their need that you would answer them speedily lord and for anyone who's sick that you would bring a healing touch to them lord for anyone who's grieving or worried that you would alleviate their worries and their anxieties and for um that grief that you would comfort them Thank you for every person here and pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen, everybody. I feel like I didn't do a good job on that passage, but I guess we're just reading through the Bible. It's not like I'm teaching the Bible, you know what I mean? You're just on this journey with me through the Bible. <laughs> but um but yeah, feel free if you know, because I feel like I can learn from you to you know so if you have any insights into you know if what i'm curious to know what you think about um the hebrew 6 passage um you know i believe once saved always saved i believe in eternal security i i believe you know that you don't lose your salvation but then this that passage was you know can make me feel a little insecure but it could be how I'm reading it. Um, but so I'm curious about your thoughts. All right, everybody. Look at Henry. Henry. Okay. Well, we'll let him sleep. All right, everyone. Bye.